drop down lists or data validation lists in Excel. Here I have a table with three columns, ID, name and product. I have my first entry in it, let's create another one. So go to the last cell and then press tab to create another row in our table. So I choose an idea, a name and then a product. But wouldn't it be nice that if we could just have a drop down here where we can choose our products from. Both in sense of making it more easy for the user, but also to validate that it is indeed a valid product that we specify here. Let's create that. So create another sheet called data. Then we choose a header. Mine will be Microsoft because my products are related to that company. And then I choose my product. I have Word, Excel and Power Automate. These are the product I want to choose from my drop down. So go back to drop down and then in either of the cells where you want to drop down, mark it, then choose data, data validation. And here in the allow, you choose list. You could either simply specify in what you want, like this, separate by a comma, but to make it more dynamic and robust, we choose to specify it from our created source here on the data sheet. So choose this up arrow, go to your data, mark wherever you want your data to be from, mine's are this one, and we will just press OK. Look what happened here. We have our drop down, Word, Excel and Power Automate. We can even drag it down here and you will see that we'll also have it here. Nice. Let's go back to our data validation settings. So we click here. The ignore blank. That is if we have blank rows in our data input here, then we will get an error message if this is not on. Let's just ignore the blanks that is standard. Don't change it unless you have a reason to. The in cell drop down. That is this drop down you see here. You don't need it because we could, all, we could remove it by unchecking this. Then it will look like this, but it will still give us the validation error. Say that we type Excel 2, you can see that we get an error here. So even though it's not a drop down, you will still get the validation. Let us go back to settings. So this one we will usually have on because it's easy for the user and convenient when we have a drop down. Then we could specify an input message. This could be something like product. Please fill in your product like this. We click OK. And you can see here that there's a nice little description. So whenever we go to the cell, we will have a description of what to do. Click data validation again, data validation. Then we have an error alert. You saw it before, we will have a stop, but we could also choose to put in a message for the user. So here we could say validation error. And here in the error message, we could say something like, your data cannot be validated. Like this. Also, if we want these changes to apply to all the cells that we have this drop down in, we need to go to settings and then tick this apply these changes to all other cells with the same settings. Then we can click OK. And now you can see that we have it here as well. Or we could simply because if there are any differences in the settings here, it won't get updated. So you can simply just drag it down. Now you will have the same settings in both places, but we have two problems. We have a problem that these ones are not in the alphabetical order. That one annoys the eye and make the usability a bit harder. And if we add new items to our list here, like PowerPoint, then we won't see it here in our dropdown. We want it to automatically happen whenever we add something to here, it should show up in the drop down. But let's first have the items here, the products in alphabetical order. What we do here is that we go to data. Now we will convert this to a table. So mark everything, press Ctrl T. My table has headers. We now make it a table, so press OK. Up here in the table name, 
we will choose another name. We will choose Microsoft. That's it. Now, if we simply just go back to our drop down, then we go to data. We go to data validation. And instead of having this as the source, we could now specify another source, which will refer to our table. So what we want to do here is that we want to use the indirect function. That one will return a range. Then we will have parentheses, quotation marks, and then we will have our company name, which in our case is Microsoft like this. We will apply it to all of these cells and then we click OK, because now you will see that we have all our products in here like this. And even if I updated it with another entry, so let me press tab, I can say power BI like this, go back to our drop down. You will see that it automatically will appear in our drop down. That's quite clever. However, we haven't sorted our alphabetically ordered problem. That's easy. So go back to data, then choose this drop down arrow from A to Z. Now it will also be sorted over here like this. Boom. Isn't that clever? If you think this video helps you, it will help me a lot if you could give this video a thumbs up. Now let's look at a even more cool feature, the dependent dropdown. Say that we also have a company here in this table. So I right click, I insert, I can call this one company. Then we could specify the company name here. Right now we only have one. So whenever we choose Microsoft, we want Microsoft products over here. But suppose that we have two more companies like Adobe and UiPath, then we want if we specified Adobe or UiPath here, we want their products to go here. Let's create a solution for that. We go to data again, then we create two more tables here. I will call this one UiPath. But now we created a merge table with this one. We are not interested in that. So press Ctrl C like this. Then we choose the UiPath products that we wanted. I want Studio Orchestrator like this. I mark this table here, Control T. I say my table has headers. That's fine. Then I go up here to the table name and I will give it the name UiPath like this. I'll create another table for my Adobe products. So that one will be Adobe. Again, control C. So here I'll have Illustrator, I'll have Photoshop, and I'll have Lightroom like this. Again, I mark this table, control T. My table has headers. That's fine. We rename the table up here to Adobe. Another thing that we want to do is that we want to create a range for the companies. So mark these three things here, go up here, say company, and then press enter. What we did here was created a range for the companies. If we mark these, we can see that those are companies. Then we go back to our drop down sheet. The first thing that we do here is create the company drop down. So go to data, data validation, choose the list that's here. Here we can just refer to equal to company. That was our named range. So we click OK. We can see that we got it here. We can even drag it down. However, if we choose Adobe here, we will still have the Microsoft over here. So let's fix that. What we do here is that we go to data validation. And instead of having this to Microsoft, we will simply just delete what's whatever in what's ever in here. And then refer to the previous column. Then we press F4. We will lock the column, but not the row like this. The dollar sign should be in the beginning. Then we can click apply these settings to all other cells with the same settings. That's fine. We click OK. And now you will see that we get an error here because Excel is not related to Adobe. We need to rechange that. And you can see here we have Photoshop. That's it. We can create another entry. So we can say third Charlie and then we can choose UiPath. Then we should have the UiPath products here and we indeed have that. If you like these automated things, 
Have a look at Power Automate, a free product from Microsoft that will automate all your office tasks very easily. I made a guide for it, which you can check here.